One, you guys have the coolest jobs on the planet. <laughs> I, no, seriously, like you guys do stuff that everyone would love to do. So I'd love to hear like how you guys got connected and let's just start from there. So uh, when I started to make music and release music, I had everything on SoundCloud posted. And Vanessa started to comment on my stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Started to comment on my I stuff. Like yeah. yeah and, I, and I saw it. I was like, okay, this girl's from Miami. And I'm originally actually from Florida. I was born in Fort Lauderdale. And I'm from a Brazilian family. Moved back to Brazil when I was only two years old. So I lived in Brazil for my whole life. And uh, I Where saw this Brazil? girl in Cuiabá, Mato Grosso. It's right in the middle, right close to, to Brasilia, which is the capital. Okay. So it's right in the middle right there. Really far from Sao <laughs> yes. Paulo and Rio. Yeah, like, that... I want jungle no beach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's really far from Sao Paulo, not even close. So um, I saw this, this girl was like commenting on my stuff mm -hmm. and like I saw she's from Miami. She's like, I saw her Instagram, went to her Instagram and saw she was really connected with people, with like important people. And cute. So I was like, okay, and cute, oh. yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> okay, I got it. So I started talking to her. I think I started talking to you, right? Or you talked to me? I don't even remember, but like it was something me, like that. That's, that's what Maybe what I was happened. like, oh, cool track or something yeah. like that. And uh, from there, we just started talking and our ideas are kind of lined up. And I said, oh, I'm from Florida. Uh, I mean, I want to go there and see what happens. And she's like, yeah, for sure, you should come. And then we just arranged a trip, went there for the first time last year, November, played there with the Ahodos at the Not Set. It was awesome, awesome party, full of people, it was so amazing. And from there, just starting to, everything starting to align. So move back, moved to, to Miami two weeks ago, three Amazing. weeks ago. Yeah. And like, just trying to make it, you know, Amazing. little by little, doing music as well, producing music and releasing stuff. I have stuff coming up in June, but we'll talk about that later. So that's how, yeah. that's Very how cool. it started. Very connected. <laughs> so Vanessa, can you explain to like the uninitiated, like what is Do Not Sit? How did you get involved there? And like, how did you progress into music? So, well, Do Not Sit is a club in Miami, Miami Beach. And it's also a record label. And it's been around for 10 years. I ended up at Do Not Sit. Um, honestly, it it was like escalated quickly, kind of. But I, I was partying, you know, just like any random person was on the crowd. And that's how I started like going six years ago, seven years ago. So it's been, I've been going a long time and I always like, like talking to people and, you know, getting to know people. And I just went into the booth, like just randomly. Just, just like, <laughs> so you're just inserting Yeah, I just, I just kind of like threw there, myself so. in there basically. Yeah, I was one of the, like, you know, people on the booth that they're like, who is this girl? And that, that was me, like the random, <laughs> <laughs> like this girl. And yeah, I just, uh, started promoting, you know, getting like friends with DJs and started promoting their events. And they liked that because I was doing free promotion, basically, of course. Got it. And yeah, that's how it all like. Got it. So it went from like raver to actively working in the scene. Yeah. Um, was there ever a moment for you where you were like, I'm going to do something else? Yeah, I used to have a corporate job, like nine to five. And I was like, I hate this. You know, like I would drive and Miami's like super, you know, like traffic is horrible. So I Unless was just get driving. A Vespa, get a Vespa and then break the law. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, I quit and I started partying during COVID. I think COVID was like the turning point for, for a lot of people, but for me, oh, yeah. especially. I'm curious, like, how do you go about sourcing talent, finding talent? Uh, what's like advice you would give to like a Nelly who, you know, not everyone gets uh, a Vanessa from Do Not Sit in the DM. <laughs> you know, like, but what's the advice to someone who like wants to get on a Vanessa's radar? I think just you have to release music. You know, you have to produce. Be out there. Be Show out there. Face, right? yeah. yeah. Because that's how I usually like, you know, get to scout. For artists, it's just like through SoundCloud and like what's there, what I, like I'm listening to, and that's actually how like I heard you because of your tracks, 
and just having like good labels, you know, I think it's pretty important to release on labels. Well, you're an Armin Miran yeah. label, so I'll that's this. amazing. Very cool. So yeah. So like, where's the give and take between like uh, production of music and throwing your own events? And where do you see like that line between kind of putting yourself on? You know, it's like I throw a party, so I put myself on and now I'm elevating myself versus production. And what do you guys think is more important? Obviously, if you're going to have a biased opinion because you produce music. <laughs> no, actually, no, because I started actually on the industry touring parties before I even started making music. Yeah. So I had a group of friends in, in Cuiabá in Brazil, which is me, PV, which is an amazing producer as well. We make a lot of music together. Shout She's out awesome. To Shout out to PV. PV, yeah, he's released on Homidas as well some other big labels, and Hannah and uh, Patty Touches. So the four of us, we started throwing these parties in Cuiabá, uh, which is a nice city. It's, uh, it's a big city, actually. And people love electronic music there. They love it. So uh, we started throwing, people, uh, throwing parties for like 100 people, 150 max. And then we, after a few months, we were throwing parties for like 500 people. It's amazing. So it was amazing, yeah. And that was how I first got connected with music. And from there, it was just natural. We were four friends we just started to start making our own thing and uh and from there it started everything and covid kind of got me into like sick to being sick on making music you know yeah, yeah. so i was just making music for fun and covid came and then i i got sick you know my mind mind sick from music not sick from covid <laughs> you got <laughs> not you yeah. got sick with making music with making music with distinction yeah um, you could have gotten covid i don't know though yeah, yeah not maybe sick from then, covid maybe no, no. both yeah, no, I've never got COVID, to be honest. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you probably have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I, I don't know how testing was in Florida or Brazil, to be honest with you. Um, that's amazing, though. Yeah. So, like, it sounds like, one, like, community yeah. is a big part of this, and then, two, like, just being present. So, like, you were graver, dancer, participant, promoter. How did you make that step to like, all right, I'm like a salaried employee with do not sit? Or what's that conversation like? So I first started working like during COVID. I, I started working with DJs, with Yohoros and, you know, other DJs. And he had already played do not sit. And that's also how like the connection came along, I, I guess, because, you know, they started seeing me more like, oh, okay, she's, you know, working with this DJ. She's not just a raver she yeah, she yeah. has like a job i guess <laughs> <laughs> she, Important decision. yeah so that's like i started helping him out with gigs and you know he also has releases and plays in like important places which do not sit of course and um this past like october i think was, that's where like we started working the opportunity just presented itself i think like one of the residents left from do not sit and of course we like there's like it's open from wednesday to saturday so we need there's a lot of days yeah we need a, like a lot of residents and if one goes you need to replace him you know yeah and then i just told uh michael which is your uh you know you should do it like you should definitely you know take your chance he was in panama and then he came to miami and yeah, that's how like, you know, we were working together. So I was just helping him curate the lineup and then he had to go back to Panama. And then I was just, you were just there. there. So. Yeah, I was still like still there. And, you know, Megan is amazing. And yep. she just kind of like, let me help her. She's like, why not? You know, it's like this girl, I've, I've known her for seven years that she's partying in my club. You know what? Who else is better to Work with. Who else is sleeping here? Yeah, who, yeah, who, is, yeah. Who, who wakes up sleeping here? Um, that's incredible. So, like, first time in New York. First time in New York. Yeah, off on New York. Oh my God, amazing city. It's just different, you know. Here, the, the air is different. I guess I don't know. It just like makes you inspired. Just walking the streets inspires you. You know, I love it. I love it. I I knew it was amazing, but not this amazing, to be honest. You know, really? Amazing. It was something. You give it, give it seven years, and you'll be like, I need to move to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I need to move somewhere else. So you played at um, at Lulu last night. Yep. The folks at Retrograde. Shout out Daniel, Daniel yep. Bedoya. He's a, a close friend. Um, tell me about the time at Lulu. Lulu's like a, a home to me. 
what was your experience oh, would you play it again man. like and more importantly like what is the like the pinnacle in nelly's mind of like where you want to play music for sure i want to go there daniel call me back please i would love to come <laughs> back it was amazing amazing time the people that were there were just vibing to the music for the whole night super nice we're super intimate cool space intimate yeah. space i love that myself to be honest i love being in close contact with people so uh i'm, I'm really definitely got COVID, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah so uh for me on making sets for me it's just a really uh it's not for me the set it's for the people that are yeah, yeah. listening to my set so um, um for me that's really important you know the connection with the crowd so when you have when you're in a space which is you're so close to the, the crowd, for me it's amazing, you know. I can feel what they're feeling, I can hear very uh, easy what they're hearing as well. So for me to make, build a set like that, it's the best, you so know. So you had a good time. I had an amazing time. All right. I had a great uh, time. Best place you've ever played, go. Do not sit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sure. I was like, I was like. <laughs> no, easy, easy. What's like the spot that you aspire to play? Or maybe a oh, festival. Man. Uh, like you know, for me, I think uh, if I'm in the Berlin scene, for me, it would be amazing, you know, because I love it, the, the scene there and like the music that comes out of that place. For me, that's the pinnacle. That's where I want to be, Wait, you where? know. Watergate, I think is a, nice. one of the yeah. best. Yeah, yeah, Carter Blau, I think it's my favorite club for sure, uh, which yeah. was the, uh, the former uh, uh, Bar 25. It was uh, there. So that's for me, it's the... I'm going to shake some things out. I, I think a compelling argument can be made that New York City is the epicenter of dance music right now. There is so much volume, so much talent, so much independent production and production groups going on. Um, that's just my two cents. But so um, Berlin is where you like have your sights set. Yeah, I mean, just because, I mean, New York is amazing. Yeah, Yaos has been amazing on music, you know, for sure. Don't get me wrong. New York you has. Can touch uh, the sound too. <laughs> I love okay. it. I saw it. It was the first thing I, I realized in the set here. Amazing. <laughs> so yeah, New York with music and art has always been top, you know, always. And uh, but I don't know, man. Berlin for me, I think because of Bar Twenty Five, I think that made such an impact on me, you know, because of the history of the club and what they do there and, and their love for music, you know. So yeah, I just love that idea on like going for like for the music, you know what I mean? And I feel that in New York I a lot. I think the fact that they don't allow cell phones, you know, like. People yeah. just can't yeah. enjoy. You That's know? for me, it's a big thing, you know. I think there's an interesting time period between like 1985 and 1995, where if you were born in that window, you got just enough exposure to this, but you had just enough exposure to not that. So I only imagine what like parties were like before the cell phones there. Yeah, there. Wow. You know, like you, you see like videos Probably of the of us concerts. Yeah, I hate it now. Yeah. Like this. You it's only like, see phones. We know your favorite spot. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Where's the best place that you've ever partied? And you can't say do not sit. Oh, I think New York. New York? I think, yeah, New York. Maybe also Europe, but if it was, I had to say like in the United States, it would be New York. Yeah. Okay. Of specific clubs, was like a specific place, sidebar. I truly like. Vanessa almost got kicked out of gospel oh on uh, <laughs> yep. Thursday night. I had to save her. Thank you <laughs> for that. That's <laughs> funny, but. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. You didn't see me no. like getting walked by a security. I'm like, what, what is going on? But yeah, that was funny. It was an interesting. Uh... Vanessa, like this, security like this. Oh, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, so yeah. uh, where in New York, though? I like HQ. I Actually, so just any of their events? Just, yeah, events. Um, but yeah, basically just, I don't know, even like random after parties on like the church and, you know, like it's just, it becomes like interesting, you know, like how quickly the night escalates and you end up doing the most random things like with the most random people and 100%. just hundred percent. It's just like that. Like you, you can go from I'm not going out to okay, let's get dinner. And then the next thing you know it's four AM and you're in a warehouse. Yeah. And I think you know it's seven AM and you're in someone's kitchen. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. how it happened yeah. basically. Takeover, so. Right there, right. That's <laughs> that's, that's it. That. I want to change gears really quickly and do a little word association. Okay. So I want you guys to think of the first thing that comes to your mind first thing like 
I'm gonna start with you, Vanessa. Fuck. <laughs> Space Miami. Crazy. Damien Lazarus. Amazing. Legend. I, th I thought both. Like legend. Ultra. Whack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ketamine. <laughs> Miami. Why are you looking at I me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right, Nelly. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, no, no. Uh, South Beach. Um, spring break. Spring break? Yeah. Okay. Where do you like to spend most of your time in, in Miami? Do not sit. <laughs> but I'm in a neighborhood. Oh, like a neighborhood? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm home pretty much like when I'm not working, I'm when home. You're not, do not <laughs> when I'm not, home. yeah, it's like yeah, I'm with my dog. Yeah. Um, all right, Nelly, you're up. Drum and bass. Uh, respect, but not my thing. That's a three words. That's, that's three words. That's, yeah, like four that's words. a lot of three words, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Sao Paulo. Beautiful. Bossa Nova. <laughs> So sadly. Lovely. New York City. Great. Amazing. Two words again, but yeah. <laughs> Crazy. You're bad, no, 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 let, You're bad, bad at this. Right, yeah, yeah, I mean, no, no, let's clean that out. Crazy. Crazy. Earplugs. Must. Must. Yeah. I don't. Must. I don't know. Must. Earplugs. Not just for artists. So. Where do you see yourself, Vanessa, in two years, five years? Like, what's like Vanessa's like long-term goal in the scope of music? Or is it like, I'm happy what I'm doing, I love what I'm doing, and like, I just want to book artists and have fun? I like, like, where I'm, what I'm doing, obviously, I love it. It's, like, I don't know, it's been incredible. So like, I'm still, like, I, I don't think I have like, realized how like, big of an, like, an impact and how, like, it's, it's been a long way, you know, I'm working at Do Not Sit, so it's, like, insane for me to, you know, think that, but... As I said, you have the coolest job. Mm -hmm. What's, like, the line, though, I'm curious, between, like, you know, a uh, manager like me, charming, good-looking, charismatic, funny, like, the list goes on, um, and someone who crosses the line? Like, how do you... Like, what's your barometer? Yeah, like, yeah, what's your barometer for, like, all right, like, I'm going to tolerate this, I'm not going to work with this. Like, how do you gauge whether or not you want to let someone, like, kind of in your circle into the do not sit kind of world? I think you can sense pretty much the energy and the vibe. Um, so, like, smiling faces. Exactly. Smiling, <laughs> yeah. you know, just having a good energy overall. You know, I, I vibe pretty much with everyone, I get along with people. And yeah, what, like I was saying before, I like curating experiences. I, I think like what I'm doing now is that. So to do it for other places than do not sit, maybe like in New York, you know, like start bringing artists to New York and other cities. I think I would like, like to expand, but still work at, you know, work with many places, but like doing the same thing, you know, bringing okay. artists. But yeah, overall, like just have a good energy, um, you know, good work ethic, be honest, you know, not like, don't scam, don't talk bullshit. Like, I don't like when people are like, talking bad about other artists and like, you know, I can... Golden rule. Golden yeah, rule, huh? don't talk bad about other artists, yeah. like what they're doing or their parties. Like, you know, like don't talk shit because... Unless it's ultra. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Unless it's the DM. And then, yeah. Yeah, it's ultra changed a lot over the years, I feel like. Recently, yeah. like now, like this year, I was like, what, what is, it became something else. It is interesting. So there's like a, a, a movement, uh, you could say within dance music where it's, I don't even know if I would call it like underground, but I would call it like more like upscale partying. You know, your, your Danians, your Talabuses, your Sabos, where it's kind of like a more refined crowd or like yeah. people that were listening to the Avicis and the Swedish houses in the mid 2000s and their tastes have evolved um ultra like they're kind of like stuck in the i mean i went to ultra time machine. but like that was 10 years ago when i went to ultra you know yeah, like, yeah. i feel like if yeah. i was still going to ultra I, I would be like you know i don't think i would have gone to get lost i feel like get lost you know you see the crowd you had a vibe that get lost. wow i was, was amazing dancing with Vanessa. sabo was throwing it down i want sabo oh. to play at my wedding 
Oh, oh wow. I need you to play it. Please. <laughs> He's amazing. Yeah, and he is, he is the GOAT, in my opinion. Well, I'm friends with Bert. So it's like, oh, yeah. you know, Mr. Goldcap. Yeah. Right? Oh, he's great. He's amazing. But yeah, no, Get Lost was, I was there for 15 hours. I don't have any traditional Brazilian food, okay. but I know that you're a fan of empanadas. So we got empanadas from Empanada Mama, the Ooh. only place in the city that's open 24 hours selling empanadas. Nice. Uh, We'll do a little... Um, you said you were going to make me empanadas once. Arepas also. Yeah. They're these great. Are, these are not made by me, but I'd be curious if we can do a little... Uh, we'll do a little empanada taste test. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> so, nice. Just go ahead and grab one. We got some portobello. No no food intolerances or no, anything? No, no. Okay. So I want well, everyone to grab a, an empanada. All righty. And let's take a bite. And we'll kind of do it like a bar stool, Dave Portnoy style, you know, like one bite, everybody knows the rules. And we'll give a rating. That's spicy, right? Cheers. Imagine. Very spicy. No, oh, I don't know. Imagine. Mm. What's yours? I don't even know. Mm. Super. Compare the bites. Come on, <laughs> Mine kind of drippy. Don't, don't drip on, on stuff. I already did that. Mm, very good, man. Super good. Um, nice. I'm going to try yours now. What do you think? It's a little dry. It's good. I love it. Nice. It's almost a pastel, Brazilian pastel. What's that? It's almost like an empanada, but the the outside is different because of what's, what it's made, you know? It's a, it's a thing in Brazil, pastel. There's right. probably here somewhere. Empanadas and a pastel and in a fist fight. Who wins? Uh, for me, Empanadas. pastel. Come on. Uh -oh. I'm Brazilian. Come I didn't on. even say, you know. Vanessa, get in a fist fight. <laughs> oh, well. Still. You're, you're way taller. But maybe. <laughs> How do you cheers in Portuguese? In Portuguese, you're going to say saúde. <laughs> what? Saúde. 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 Salud. Saúde. Salud. Oh, hi. Le yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know my things. <laughs> there we go. So, good prosecco. Nice. I said before, you guys have like arguably like the coolest jobs. Um, what's the part of the job you don't like? I've been learning like a lot about over the last couple of years about just everything. Like I've had DJs stand my couch at during Miami Music Week because <laughs> the offset costs. And we're going to do not sit like. We're staying on someone's couch. You guys are staying on my couch. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, like, exactly. I am. Uh, Thank you so much. I'm curious, you know, like, <laughs> what, what, what's the part of the job that you don't like? And, like, when do you feel like you've arrived? Like, do you, are you satisfied with where you are yet? And what's that kind of moment in your head where, like, you're like, I did the job, I've made it, I'm happy? Mm -hmm. You want to go first? Well, I, th I think where I want to get, like, I don't think there's a limit, you know, I don't like to, like, set limits. I think, like, you know. The world's your oyster. Yeah. No. The moon, even. Who knows? Like, who knows what's going to happen, you know? Now I'm working here, like, I don't know what's next. I, I hope, like, you know, big things are coming up. But, yeah, um, what I don't like about the job, maybe, like, I think sometimes people, like, you know, they they can be like disrespectful sometimes or you know yeah crazy alcohol, things happen tonight it's, alcohol and you drugs know. and all those things oh, oh look who's here we got a little hello you know, little guy come on yeah. hello again okay hello can he get here he's so beautiful good boy well trained okay so you know you're like you're I think that's definitely part of it. I think there's like an 80 20 rule in dance music where it's like everyone's community, love, you know, all of those things are definitely present. 80% uh, of the people at a rave, like I wouldn't trust in my home without yeah. me. Yeah. I've met Man uh, Vanessa, you know, for yeah. a short amount of time and I gave her the keys to my place and I'm like, super oh, awesome. Like, hopefully, you haven't stolen anything. <laughs> so like the people component, like totally makes sense to me. Yeah. Outside of like the people, like 
What about like the job? Like right. what, what's like your gripe? So for me, what I least like about the job, honestly, it's social media, you know? It's really important nowadays. Without social media, you are nobody, to be honest. You have to have a good social media with a lot of pictures and like uh, having, you know, this close contact with your community, you know? That's that's the way right now to do it. But I, I don't really like it to have- Have you ever been not booked or think you've been passed on because you don't have 10,000 followers? Oh, every day, I almost. Mean... Uh, that's what happens the most. Nowadays, that's something I really don't like, you know, because back in the days, well, look, I'm really young, but I like, I, I have oh, that feeling. Dude. I'm 22 years old. Oh, you're a fucking baby. <laughs> oh my God, he's yeah. 22. The whole, the whole crew, by the way, Stacey, is just went, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm 22 like, years old. And, uh, super young. Good for you, man. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, and yeah, so uh, before, there was like a thing that you, you were creating an experience, you know? So it doesn't matter. It's even better. It was even better if no one knew the guy. Because, like, he goes there, no one knows who the guy is, and he blows everyone's mind, like, whoa, what the fuck? Who is this guy, you know? And nowadays, just like because let's let's book the biggest ones, you know, let's be the, which they're not wrong yeah. because they want to make money in the end. Yeah. So I'm not saying they're wrong for that, but like for the crowd and for the experience is not really good, you know. Do you so, know that like so you play Lulu? Do you find that like after every show you get like that little tick up and follow? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. If it's a new place, even more, you know. If it's somewhere uh, I've never been. There's gonna be a lot. So, for example, I came here with 2,000 followers. I'm like on 2,020 followers now. Hey, so, uh, cool. I got 20 Can people. you like give me like five? Uh, oh yeah, for sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay. So, I'm sure. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sure. And I, I, I don't know if it's like, at first, but like Vanessa, like how much interaction goes on in your inbox where it's like, all right, people see Vanessa do not see a position of power. Like, how often are people like? I mean, that's yeah, kind of like what I met you, yeah. but then like I played like kind of chase, not chase, I don't think, but like how often are people reaching out to you for ABC and everything else that you could do for that? I mean, it's either also like getting them booked and do not sit, but besides that, even, you know, I work with artists and sometimes I get requests to like manage them oh, or, okay. you know, work with them. Sometimes, the sometimes it doesn't fit, you know, and do not say you you have like a certain type of music so i wish i also that, that part like the social media like part takes a little bit of it's important yeah importance. you know i just don't like it but you it's know? important you know? But it's, nowadays it's, i think it's both sides you know where, where you have to like curate an experience and you know and i it's about the music it, it's always about the music and you know community and everything but yeah it's also like you have to like balance it out you know, there's people like that only book big names. I I don't like only booking big names. Yeah. You know, I I take everything into consideration. Yeah. I guess you take risks, though. I think. Yeah, yeah. I do. That. That's what people, cre creators and promoters, should be doing. You know what she does. So that's why she, I think she's amazing because of that. You know, she like she Back wants to Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> she's like really wants to create an experience. You know, she doesn't see only the cover. She sees the inside of the people. So like. Okay, this guy is amazing. He's a good artist, or like you know, I trust Josie because she she really is. Her music yeah. is good, you know. Her music is good, so I'm gonna put him there because her music is good, you know, not because of how much yeah. followers she has, yeah. but because of her music. You know what I mean? Exactly. So that for me, it's really important in a promoter in a in a place. If I see or like speak softly or the, the Lulu. Oh yeah. See? It's for me, that's really important. You know, they're, it's the same they're, vibe. Yeah. Yes, yeah. You know, it's like it's a, it is similar. I think that there's like. Uh, like Boho, Miami, Do Not Sit, and Lulu oh, yeah. could all be like distant cousins. Yeah, right. You know, they're all small, intimate, and, 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 and similar in a lot of ways. So we were just saying that my dog is incredibly cute and yeah. named after and Rio. Rio. Yeah. Rio de Janeiro. Oh, he's oh, out. No. That's, that's, his, that's okay. his moment. He's gone. Rio, sit. I think he's heard his name. Rio, sit. Yeah. Very he's, cute. Maybe very he's smelling my There dogs. we go, good boy. So... <laughs> You said you've never been to Rio, though. I've never been to Rio, man. Never, never. So, like, why the fuck not? Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know, man. It was just not really appealing to me, I, I guess. But, like, I, it's just a must Are go. you I afraid know. of the ocean? Not at all. <laughs> can right? you swim? Yeah, I, can, can you swim? I can, I can swim. Are you prone to sinking? <laughs> <laughs> no. But I'm going to go, man. I'm going to go for sure. I think this year I have something planned for Rio this year. Because it's a must, it's a must go, you know? It's one of my favorite cities on the planet. Do you have me there? We named our dog Rio. Yeah. His, oh. his name what do you is mean? Rio. 
So Rio, cool, what's man. your name? So I prefer, and you have been to Sao Paulo too? We have been to Sao Paulo. We didn't love Sao Paulo. Yeah, All right, so never been nice. to Rio. You're gonna love Floripa, Florida yeah. nobody. Yeah, we, we had a wedding in Floripa. Yeah, yeah, that's, it was crazy. I love there. That's for me it's the yeah. best place in Brazil. Yeah, yeah. Floripa's like a Brazilian Hawaii. Hampton. Yeah, so really, like, yeah. yeah, like so nice. that's an island. It's literally an island. Yeah, very, very bougie. Yeah. Um, really, really cool place. So like what's next on the on the Nelly world tour? Oh man, I don't He's know. Like, yeah, yeah, sky's the limit, you know. If no, I mean, do you have any ab- other bookings coming up? Oh, okay. That's no, my job. Miami, yeah. <laughs> Fucking A, do so your he job. was like, hey. Yeah, next uh, next up is Miami. Do not say it. We're gonna be opening for what's his name? Well, you we have a lot of get- oh I Eilish. forgot his name. There's Eilish. Ika Mujika. Eilish. 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 Eilish? I don't know how to. Pro- yeah, so we're gonna be. He's from Amaya, you know. He was playing last what? night, actually. We met. We, I think he's Amaya. He's Amaya. Yeah, Eilish. Oh, okay. Is his? Is it Eilish or Eilish? Eilish. 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 Shout Eilish out Eilish. 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 And now I'm here again. So I yeah. didn't have plans to come here, but You're like come. Yeah, we were talking to so like, come. no, I need someone here to open for me regularly. And I was a fan of Do Not Sit for the label, Do Not Sit for such a long time. I had been like searching their music and playing their music for such a long time. And I was like, why not? You know, like it's a dream thing for me. I've never yeah. had this opportunity to be a resident or like to open up uh, in Brazil. So I have an opportunity to do that in Miami. Why am I going to do it? You know what I mean? In the US where there's a, a lot of important people uh, there here and there, you know, like important industry from the industry, yeah. you know, and I think mostly because of um, our Basel. So I was there for our Basel, and that oh. for me kind of struck yeah. my head. So I'm sure you saw a lot of art, I a lot of in, art, yeah. a lot of important people, a lot of parties. So I was like, okay, this is the place. That I, I got him in uh, everything. <laughs> God, I, she she achieved it the all access. Yeah. Once you go all access, oh, yeah. there's no going there's, back. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like like it's everything's ruined afterwards. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not the same. Yeah, it's not. I was the actually same. Yeah. well. We went to Racastella as well. Yes, yes. Since you were mentioning social media, I do that too as well. Oh really? Like, yeah, marketing, social media, and I work for Rakastella. Well, I know who to hit for passes for next year. Yeah, boom, this boom. year yeah, actually. This year. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, who are two questions for both of you? Who are five artists that you haven't booked but that you would want to get to do not sit in order of importance for you? Top from top to bottom. Ooh, we got an order. Wow. We got an order. He's better with I'm the list. I'm gonna put first a New Yorking artist, Nicholas Jar. Super love Nicholas Shaw. Yeah, he's my the, my biggest influence. He has like five different aliases too. Yeah, he's a he has uh, a band too. What's um, uh, it's Dark Side? Uh, I guess the main band. Yeah, Dark Side's the band, yeah. but then um, he he released that album. Yeah, yeah, against all logic. Against Thank all you, logic. Josie. Yep. Against all logic. Okay, so, so Nicholas Jar. Nicholas Jar first on the list. David August. Um, DJ Cole's amazing, love him so much. Oh, oh, Jar yeah. me up. Jar yeah, me up. Oh my god. Uh, so wow. I got three. Mung Leto, which I love him so much. We got one more. Armin Miron, for sure. Okay. Yeah. I like Armin. that. Armin. Armin, it's like right now. We uh, just see, saw all Armin, of the ones right? that you uh, mentioned like, yeah. have pretty oh, no. much played Do Not Sit. Yeah, so. he really inspired me. You know, Armin, for a long time, he was, really has been inspiring me for like uh, a couple of years. Now I have. I'm more inspired by this guy of like the, the psychedelic side of music. Are you uh, are you connected with Armin? Yes, yeah. I, he released, I released on his, label. his label. Let's send him a DM. He hasn't, right he now. hasn't <laughs> let's, uh, let's met D- him in person. Yeah, I haven't met like, him in person yet. Let's yeah. DM Armin right now and say, yeah. let's meet in person. Every time I, I, there's an opportunity to meet him, something happens. Last time he was he was in Miami. He was gonna play Do Not Sit. He got sick, and he couldn't play Do Not Sit, so I couldn't meet him. And now he's playing here tomorrow, Sunday. I'm leaving today. Oh, he's but playing here sucks. tomorrow. Yeah. He's playing tomorrow. Yeah, right? yeah. Can you get us on the list? <laughs> I'm not even going to be oh, here, but I can I try. I don't care about you. What no, are you like, talking about me? Yeah, he's like... I can try. I can try. I'll I talk mean, to him for sure. I mean, me and a plus one. <laughs> I, I yeah. talk to him. Don't worry. I'll okay, talk. I was like, cool. probably, that, yeah. that was a quick list. Nicholas Jar um, uh, makes really cool music. Oh, hyper, hyper, hyper talented. Yeah. So, like, when you're not making music, like... Are are those the types of artists that you're listening to, or do you stray outside of electronic? 
I do straight up electronic a lot. So uh, since I'm always making music and like on that world, I like to like get out a little bit and like listen to other stuff. So I love all the Brazilian stuff, Bossa Nova, Samba. Oh yeah. I love all the 60s, the 60s stuff, 70s stuff, which is like part of psychedelic rock kind of era in Brazil. So I love all that kind of stuff. I love uh, Jim Hendrix as well. Fucking love him. He's such an amazing musician and Thank artist. Uh, I think all of the psychedelic 60s and 70s kind of stuff is just my thing, you know? I love it so much. Psychedelic rock. You said psychedelic a lot. Yeah, <laughs> love right? It. Love it. Did you realize already? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, Vanessa. Outside of the, or let's hear your top five artists. I'm curious. Okay. And then, like, outside of dance music, like, what do, what do you find yourself listening to? I like The Doors. The Doors? Uh, the Strokes. The Strokes? New York I like, City? I like indie music. That's, okay. like, my thing. I listen to I'm What about dance music? Artic Arctic artists? Monkeys. Dance music? Yeah. Um, Gold Cup, you know, Damien Lazarus, Kind Music. Uh, if I had to say one more. I'm thinking, I'm very bad with Liz. You're, you have all the names there, but I'm like... <laughs> Nelly's just waiting. Say me, say me. Say Nelly. Say Nelly. <laughs> okay. And Fabian. Fabian Cross, that I also like. I like the, you know, like the small, like, artists that are like, I feel like he should, he actually is one of the people that should have, like, a What do you mean? Damien's huge. Yeah, <laughs> Fabian Cross. Oh, he, Fabian Cross. Okay. He too had, like, a ton of followers and more, you So know, where do you think that, like, divide happens? Is that... Is that music politics? Is that who you know? Is that nepotism? Like, like what what prevents a, a, a Fabian from you know getting a Promoters. ten thousand dollar night rate versus? Oh, I wish I, I, I wish I knew that. I'm like me. People, well, not me, but people like promoters are usually the ones that, like you said, that's basically like an issue in the industry. Yeah, that they're just you know you want big names. Instead of like taking a chance, and yeah. that's that and risking. What should, yeah, that's what you should be doing. And do you think that comes not, back around though? Like, so like you book um, artist X Y Z who's on the come up. Does that person have recall? And then when you book them again, like they give you that friends and family rate, or is it like, honey, prices went up? Um, I mean, it's it happens like both things happen, but. If they have like a higher price, they still give you like a discount, like not the same. Imagine if you got someone for five hundred dollars and now their rate is like fifteen thousand. They, you kind of meet in the middle, you know. Like we can't do it that low, but you know we'll give you. So for like an artist price. on the come up, like, how do you go from with a booker like you from a five hundred dollar price point to a fifteen thousand dollar price point? Is it like? original releases that blow up is it like just high amount of volume of touring like how do you make that jump because that's a quantum leap from 500 like that's that goes from i'm yeah. doing six gigs a month to pay rent and like have a car and insurance or maybe not even <laughs> insurance to i'm playing two gigs a month yeah. and living comfortably and picking and choosing like how to like how does an artist do it, or yeah, how do, or how do you, what it takes, what it takes yeah, to, to be you, there. Yeah, yeah, how do you think about it, or how does an artist like need to think producing? about it? Producing, well, besides producing, you mean it, it? Like I hate to say it, but social media is important yep. as well, and just knowing where to play, like I don't know. So quality over quantity. Connecting is very like if you like if you're a DJ, you need to get yourself out there, not only producing, but you have to go out and you have to meet people. Yeah. Yeah, I know there's DJs that are like, kind of don't like it because they're more, like some yeah. DJs are shy, like whether- More introvert. Yeah, more introvert and, but you have to like, try to get yourself out there at least, yeah. like, you know, talk to like- Put the face of the name. Yeah. I know there's DJs that are introverted, but they, they still talk to people and they, you know, go get yourself out there and talk to them and then even Atish is you know he he's big and he still like talks to everyone in the party he stays talking to them yeah. connects Lee Burridge does that also he's so nice super nice you know, like, 
and yeah. doing that even if like you're big or small or like however you like wherever you are you have to get yourself up yeah like, got it so like having that level of like humility yeah. and I think owning the fact that and this is I think the fourth time I said this like it's a dream job for a lot of people being able to create and make money you know there's a that Japanese belief the kaji it's like find something you love find something you're good at and it can also make you money and like that gives your life purpose and I think that like a lot of DJs check that box I think nowadays you guys are saying talking about uh, how you can you know come up and, and get a bit big I think nowadays with social media it's much yeah uh, We're it's TikTok. vast the, 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 the uh, opportunities and the possibilities that you have in hand let's put an example of Moshek I don't know if you heard about him I can pull my legs behind my head when I dance I can stand in place make it shake make it vibrate I can pop pop then drop make my booty hot So he has been making Crazy. music. Yeah, that's always dancing. He's on the neck. He's, yeah. like, he's like the South American he, fisher. Yeah. yeah. That's why that's he, he exploded. Because of TikTok, you know? Yeah, yeah. He was already making music and, and, making, and, and playing, but it was because of TikTok and videos on Instagram that he, got, he exploded. You know so what how I mean? important is that then? Like just like the high energy of like a fisher or a Mojack, like, like do you need to be going fucking crazy up there. Like, I mean, like, I feel like you have to connect with the crowd. Yeah, I think like, you helps, can't just be just like playing. Yeah. Like I, I notice that a lot when like, yeah. you know, and I, I can sense it as well when I'm in Do Not Sit and I'm tired and you know, the DJ is just like, they're playing one track after the other and it's not really like dancing, vibing. Yeah, that is like vibing. game face though. Like I know some DJs that it's like, they're locked in and it's like, I got my game face on. Um, so like, Not a DJ. Actually, fucking couldn't do anything with DJ equipment if I tried. But I would imagine if I was, especially early on, I would be like zoned in and yeah. trying to balance like being the party while at the party while playing for the party is a tough juggling act. I'm like that, bro. And like I, I force myself to dance yeah, and to like, like give my hands up. <laughs> But uh, but I am, to. but I am kind of like that. You know, when I'm in the zone, I'm in the zone. I don't like to think about anything. I, I just focus yeah, a lot. Yeah, I go to do not sit and I see you like playing, and I'm like, Nelly, you, you talk to me. You know, I'm in the booth there. Like, like get away, yeah. <laughs> go away. I like to focus yeah. a lot. So, don't answer if you're not comfortable. Okay. On or taking drugs before your sets. Never. When it comes to drugs and alcohol, just say no. Never, never, never. Usually. Maybe uh, weed. No, but for me, it's not drug, to be honest, you know? Wow. But I, even weed, I don't really like to, like, use it before the gig. Even in the day, throughout the day, I just like to be focused, not even drink. So uh, usually if I'm, I'm going to drink, I'm going to drink throughout the set or after I, I finish my set. So I like to be in the spot, like, with my head uh, in the right place, you know? For me, that's really important. It's a must to, to have your head in the right place when you go playing. Because in the end, it's a job. It's not a... It's not a... Focus. It's not a, I don't know, it's like a fucking throw in the air, do whatever you want yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. I, treat it, I treat it as a job, you know, like a yeah. regular job, which you serious. go every day from Monday to very, Monday. Very, very, very like, serious. Or the There are some <laughs> DJs, though, that like have kind of made a name for being the life of the party. So like, like, yeah, like John Summit as an example, yeah. Ricardo Villalobos, like they're known as like, uh, yeah. I'm going to be on a 24 hour bender and people eat that shit up. Yeah. No, yeah, not for true. me. Not for you. No. Well, respect, self-awareness is important. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I won't ask you the same question yeah. because... <laughs> because I, you know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I've just hit you with a bunch of questions. Oh, I'm going to give you an opportunity to each ask me three questions. You start. All right, man. <laughs> Let's put it this way. Um, I want to know more about you, man. I don't, I don't know much about you. No, no just that's not a question. That's, that's not a question. Not a question. But I'm going to ask you. a question. I want to know what you do on a daily basis. On a daily basis, I work a, a, a corporate job and uh, the idea is like lean into music. You know, my, my girlfriend, um, she works a corporate job. She's a DJ. She's incredible. And we realized that music, like a lot of people in COVID, um, isn't tangential or tertiary. Like it is paramount. It's a part of our identity, you know, it's like uh, in many ways how we fell in love. 
to figuring out like how to monetize and do something, you know, find that purpose within this space, which is part of the reason why, you know, like I'm doing this is because I had a, a dream and a desire to do content and I had a love for music and um, naturally like gregarious social guy. So I thought like what better way to involve myself in a space that I love than like to have How conversation with people. What's up? How, how did you get into music? Was like uh, partying? So uh, when, when the crew was getting set up before, you know, like I was a student of hip hop first and foremost, like li grew up listening to. He didn't just say what I think he did, did he? Eminem. My guns go boom, boom, and your guns go out. Big L. Out of bail, fresh out of jail, California dream. Tupac. <laughs> That's how most of these so called gangsters pass. Big E. Around this you, your mama and your cousin too. Outcast. Um, like list goes on and on. I can still rap every single line to 50 cents, get rich or die trying, um, like word for word. You know, I was 13 years old in the suburbs, like uh, fucking thinking I was somewhere fucking else. <laughs> um, and then I shifted um, into more like jam banny, Umphreys McGee, Mo, Disco Biscuits, um, STS9. And the kind of turn left moment was in, or maybe turn right moment was uh, David Guetta at the Congress Theater in Chicago with two of my best friends, Mike Claps and Joe Tringle. God rest Joe Tringle's soul. Um, soul. Um, but saw David Guetta and I was like, wow, I like, like this. this is <laughs> this is just so much fun, such energy, and. Um, yeah, like the 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 rest is kind of history. Super nice, man. Amazing. Yeah, yeah super cool. Yeah. All right, nice. and then and, and what are your plans for music? As I think you were saying a little bit about that, but like, what do you what do you see plans yourself for, on, on the music industry? Pl plans for music is um, um, have fun, continue to get more involved, figure out a way to like incorporate what I'm good at with what I love to do, and I think like this is like a good start for it, but you know, like more on that to come, we'll see. People could watch this and be like, this fucking sucked. And then like, it was all for naught. But um, we have a-, a, a Part of this is that you're doing, that's what is important. That is- so, yeah, That's what is important. You know, Fear kills more dreams than failure course, ever has. Course, so yeah. like taking the yeah. leap is important. I have like uh, 200 musics that have never gonna be released. And I have like 20, 25 that are released. So you see it, you know. Get them out you gotta be yeah, doing it, you gotta do it. You gotta fail like, it to like, you know, have something cool, you know. And for sure, this is going to be amazing. It's already, it's already, it's already awesome. Man. It's already amazing. Well, I appreciate it. Congratulations, and, and good yeah. for you, man. It's good that you're doing this. Super important, super amazing. I have amazing. my question. It's like, it took, question? it took this long okay. to like, come up with. I was like, but it's, I'm repeating one of your questions to me, okay. to you. I want to know your five top artists. <sighs> Right? It's hard, right? They're feeling like you us, see. right? Wow. That's, that's, tough. Tough. that's not easy. That's tough. Um, you see? So... Five minutes later. If I could, like, make a super DJ, it would be, like, MK, Duke Damon had a baby, Pablo Fierro and Sabo had a baby. Those two babies had a baby and created super DJ. And that would trump all five. There you go. There you go. Let's make them have babies. Well, thank you for this. Thank you so much. Thank it was you. awesome. Thank you, crew. Awesome. Yeah, you guys are oh amazing. God. You guys are amazing. Thank you so yeah. much, everyone. I believe Detroit guy um, released a song in 1996 called Burning that you could put on right now.